In this movie, we're going to look at this super sweet wizard, and we're going to animate his face and some lightning bolts using the position property. Now, position is just what it sounds like. It's basically where stuff is on screen. It's position. But because of that, it can do some pretty sweet stuff. Position is probably one of the things you'll animate most in After Effects. So I have this animating position project open here, and there are two compositions, as you can see by these tabs, wizard start and wizard finish. So the start is where we're going to start working, but here's what we're going to make. Here's the end result. If I hit the space bar, we can preview this. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to animate his face moving here, so his eyebrows and his mustache going up and down, which gives the illusion he's casting some kind of spell, and then he shoots out some lightning bolts. Go back over to the uh, wizard start composition here. And I'm just going to hold down the space bar to get this little move tool. You could also use the middle mouse button now in After Effects CS4 and click and drag this wizard around. That doesn't matter exactly where it is. You're just trying to recenter your view here. That's all you're doing there. Now, as we come here to the wizard start, we have the left eyebrow layer selected. You may or may not have that selected. That's fine. As we click this eye icon to turn the layer on and off, we notice a problem. What's wrong is, is that these are not labeled correctly, the eyebrows. You might say, well, that is the left eyebrow. When you're doing character animation, the names, as far as left and right, are always from the point of reference of the character. So even though this is the eyebrow on the left to you and me, this is the wizard's right eyebrow. So what we're going to do is going to hit the return key or the enter key on the PC and select this and change this from left to right and then change the right one from right to left. The reason why we're talking about naming things correctly in this movie is because you've always got to name things correctly. In these tutorial movies, it's my job to try to get you as much information as, as quick as possible. But in the real world, before you start working, there's just a lot of housekeeping you have to do and naming things correctly is one of those absolute essentials. Now let's talk about this right eyebrow position here. If it's not showing, just hit the letter P to reveal it. The position property actually has two numbers. One on the left, one on the right. This one on the left is the X position. In other words, the horizontal position. This number, 400, refers to how many pixels its anchor point, which is this little center doohickey we'll talk about later in this chapter, it's how far this is away from the left edge. So essentially this is 400 pixels over from the left edge. The second property is the Y position, in other words, the up-down position. And this number, 404.3 in this case, is how many pixels down from the top edge this anchor point is. So usually with a Cartesian coordinate system, things are calculated from 0, 0 in the center of the graph. But here in After Effects, it's calculated from the upper left-hand corner. So let's go ahead and click the stopwatch for position to animate this position. Now we could animate position in a few different ways. One of the things we could do is actually just click and drag and move this layer around. That's definitely one easy way to do it. I don't prefer to do things like that because it's easy to go crazy. It's easy to accidentally move things off to the center and then think, okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's a little adjustment. And his eyebrow goes on his forehead, and that's not cool. So I'm actually going to undo that, get back to square one here. A much safer way for me personally to do this is by adjusting these values here in the timeline panel. Of course, it's just a matter of personal preference. There's no right or wrong way to do it. In this case especially, we're just going to move his eyebrows up and down. So we're just going to be dealing with the Y property. So there's no reason to bring the X value into this. So let's start out by raising his eyebrows. To do that, we're actually going to decrease this value because that will reduce how far it is away from the top edge. So we're going to click this and drag this, the second value, to the right. And you can see here, because we're dealing with facial expressions, a little dab will do you. Just a little bit is all you need to make a big change uh, with these wizard's eyebrows. So let's raise them to about there. Maybe a little higher. Now let's do the same thing with the left eyebrow. I'm going to hit P for position. And we'll move these eyebrows in tandem. So we'll go back to the beginning, start here, click the stopwatch, move in time, change the value, decrease it. Actually, we just click in, type 400.3 so that they match. And there we go. He's looking kind of surprised. Now, one of the things that you'll notice too very quickly as you start dealing in After Effects is that one second, which typically, even if you're dealing in video, one second's a pretty brief amount of time. When you're dealing with motion graphics and animation, one second is an eternity. That's one of the big problems that people that are inexperienced in After Effects often make, from what I've seen anyway. 
I'll often see newbies making these animations that are like three or four seconds long, and they should be one second long. Um, you see, in real life, like when I, I'm moving my hands when I'm talking right now, and they're going fast. It's really, really fast. It's not one second. It's probably not even half a second. It's a small, small fraction of a second. And so here is the one second mark, and we're making this animation take place in less than a half of a second. But even though this is timed for less than half a second, it's still going to seem too slow once we preview it. So anyways, as we go, we could just move the current time indicator and now adjust this back so we bring these down lower and then higher and lower. And we could just keep going back and forth as we please. There's no section in the After Effects help for how to animate the eyebrows of a wizard. So we're just going to do the best we can. So now I'll bring him down again. At the end, I want him to be pretty low because I want him to be mad because he's casting a spell at something he's looking up at. So as we take this back to the first frame, we could drag the current time indicator back there and hit the space bar to preview this. And he's doing something. I suppose go up and down and up and down. Pretty awesome. Now let's get his mustache to match. I'm going to select the mustache layer and hit the P key for position. I'm just going to go over a couple things here real quick. The mustache will move up and down as he's talking. Now you got to be careful here because once you go to extremes, you could see the problems with the art behind the mustache. So we don't want that. So let's do something a little bit more reasonable. Be up just a little bit and then move in time. Change the value. Bring it back down here, move in time, change the value, and so forth. So now when we preview this, he casts a spell and his eyebrows move up and down. Again, you could drag the current time indicator to the beginning and hit the space bar. Look at that. If we go to the lightning bolts, the lightning bolts are going to go from left to right. So we've been animating the second value here in position, but we actually want to animate the first value, the x-axis, which again is left to right, for the lightning bolts. So hit the letter P. Now I'm not going to click the stopwatch to create keyframes just yet, because if we were to do that, then the lightning bolts would stay on the entire time while he's casting the spell. What we want to have happen is that there's nothing on screen until he casts the spell, and then the lightning bolts shoot out. So what we're going to have to do is change the timing of the layer. So I'm going to click the layer and drag it to the right. There we go. And I'll do that with the uh, next lightning bolt as well. Just drag it a little bit further along. So now we can drag the current time indicator until the lightning bolt comes on screen here. And then click the stopwatch for position. Move in time. Less than a second. Don't go, go quite all the way to the two second mark. And then click and drag on the left property, the X position, to move this off screen. Now you might need to zoom out a little bit, which you can do with your wheel mouse if you have a wheel mouse. Or you could use this magnification slider here. Make sure that's all the way off screen. We don't want our lightning bolts just kind of hanging around. And then let's select the lightning bolt too. Move in time to when it comes on screen. There we go. And do the same thing. Hit the letter P to reveal position. Click the stopwatch for position. Move less than half a second. And then click and drag the X value of the position property until the lightning bolt is off the screen. And now we can hit the home key, hit the space bar, cast a spell, shoot some lightning bolts. Now I realize we went through this rather quickly. So if you want to, after this video is over, go back and fine tune things. You can go back and fine tune the eyebrows, the mustache, the lightning bolts, all to your liking. Next, we're going to look a little more closely at how to preview our animations.